a group of friends, Edward, Michael, Maria, and Evelyn, were on a road trip, returning home from a weekend of fun in a neighboring state. It was after 11 at night and rain was heavily pouring. They did not mind the storm. They were busily consumed in laughter and sharing memories of their trip. However, they did not pay attention to the illuminated low fuel indicator gleaming from the dashboard. About half an hour later, they found themselves stranded on a deserted road, their car sputtering to a halt. Rain poured even harder as they sat in the vehicle, clueless as to what they should do. They each attempted to call for help, but they could not get signals in the isolated area. There were no houses, businesses, or any sign of life other than an abandoned manor in the distance. With no other option in sight, they decided to seek shelter for the night. They approached the open field that stretched before them. It was a sea of untamed grass and weeds. The rain continued to pour, making their trip through the mud and wet grass an uncomfortable journey. Finally, they reached the front of the manor. They slowly pushed open the heavy creaking doors and stepped into the large foyer. Edward, the only person with a flashlight, pointed it into the darkness of the manor. With hesitation, the friends walked further into the manor, shuddering as they felt an unsettling presence in the air. The storm outside intensified and the wind howled through the cracked windows. Now standing in the dark and dilapidated living room, the friends got into a disagreement as to where they should sleep for the night. The most daring of the friends, Edward, suggested they explore the manor to find a room where they would all feel safe and somewhat comfortable. After additional minutes of debating and contemplation, they all agreed with Edward's plan. They began walking through the halls while remaining cautious with every echoing footstep. They approached the staircase and began climbing toward the upper floor, the wooden stairs creaking with each footstep. They reached the second floor and were now standing in front of a long, dark hallway. They began walking slowly and came to the first open door. They peeked into the room and observed a forgotten nursery. Broken toys lay strewn across the floor, and a faded rocking chair sat in the corner. Edward stepped into the room, and the air immediately turned cold. He heard a faint noise coming from the area where the rocking chair sat. He looked into the dark corner and saw the chair slightly rocking. When his friends also saw the chair moving, Maria let out a scream that echoed throughout the hall. The group hurriedly moved far away from the room and Edward closed its door. Maria and Michael urged the group to leave the manor, but Edward convinced them to stay because they had nowhere else to go. Against their better judgment, they also decided to follow Edward as he continued exploring the second floor. Each room they entered seemed to hold a piece of the manor's secret history. They discovered a study filled with old books and a desolate study where cobwebs hung from the chandeliers like ghostly veils. In one room, they found the piano covered in a layer of dust. Out of curiosity, Michael pressed a key and the note filled the air with haunting whispers. Maria and Evelyn shrieked in terror and they all fled the room. They scrambled down the staircase and found themselves in the dark living room. Maria yelled, We have to get out of this place. Edward responded. And where will we go? We have to stay here for the night. We'll leave in the morning. Maria began crying and Evelyn quickly embraced her in a hug to comfort her. Edward stated, Let's see what's back there. Pointing to an area beyond the living room. Evelyn and Michael tried talking Edward into staying in the living room area for the night, but he had a growing temptation to keep exploring the manor. Not wanting to split up, they followed Edward as he stubbornly walked into the darkness beyond the living room. They eventually stumbled upon a hidden cellar door near a far wall of the dining room. Its rusty hinges screeched as they pushed it open, revealing a narrow staircase descending into a dark lower area. The group exchanged anxious glances, but Edward, driven by curiosity and an unknown determination, pushed them onward. Following Edward, they slowly descended the staircase into the dark cellar. It was dark and musty, and the walls were lined with several shelves of glass jars. 
each containing a mysterious substance. They cautiously inspected the jars, only to find that they held preserved organs and other alien-like specimens. Their nerves frayed. The friends retreated up the stairs, eager to escape the horrors they had uncovered. Edward was now on board with them, leaving the manor, stating they could just stay in the vehicle until the morning. They began searching for the main exit, and when they finally found it, the door was now locked and would not open. They desperately tried to open the door, but it would not budge. They turned towards another area of the main floor and came upon an old bedroom. The bed was neatly made, as if waiting for its long-departed occupant to return. On the nightstand lay a faded photograph of a family, smiling in a moment of joy. As the friends examined the picture, the storm outside raged on, matching the tempest of emotions welling within them. In that moment, they heard a soft whisper, barely audible amidst the thunderous rain. Their fear grew as their whispers grew closer. In the corner of the room stood a rocking chair that began gently swaying back and forth. The gentle sway slowly turned into intense and deep rocks, as if it was being moved by an unseen force. Suddenly, a ghostly figure emerged from the shadows. Its eyes held a mixture of sorrow and rage, and its voice carried the weight of a thousand lost souls. You have awakened me, the ghostly figure whispered, its voice echoing through the chamber. For years, I have been trapped in this forsaken manner, consumed by anguish and despair. Now, you shall share my fate. Friends tried to flee, but the doors and windows sealed shut, trapping them within the manor's walls. The ghostly figure advanced slowly towards them as their cries and pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears. As the storm raged outside, the manor consumed their souls, and the friends disappeared into the darkness of the manor, becoming tormented ghosts trapped within. To this day, the manor stands in the heart of the woods, its secrets and terrors undisturbed. It is said that those who dare to venture near the manor can hear shallow moans and cries for help echoing through the dark walls. The ghost of the four friends, lost in darkness forever.